Hi, in this problem, we're going to do a problem from a book by H.B. Phillips. And the book is called Integral Calculus. And it was published in 1917. And H.B. Uh, Phillips was an assistant professor at MIT, which stands for the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And so the technique um, in the book says that when you have an integral that has the form ax plus b to the p over q, what you can do is you can simply set ax plus b equal to z to the q. And if you think about it, what that does is it clears everything up. For example, if I simply, let me just show you, if you have ax plus b to the p over q, using the substitution, um, we simply replace ax plus b with z to the q. So this is z to the q to the p over q. Really cool, right? And properties of exponents say that this is z to the q. Um, whoops, oh, let me just write it a different way. z to the q times p over q. They cancel and you get z to the p. So which is much easier than this rational exponent. So let's go ahead and do a harder example. And again, this is from um, the book by H.B. Phillips uh, called Integral Calculus from 1917. And this example is actually pretty tough. This is 2x minus 3 to the 1 half dx over 2x minus 3 to the 1 third plus 1. So in this case, um, simply doing this substitution is not going to be enough because we need to get rid of both uh, rational exponents. And so Phillips does describe in his book that when you do that, um, you have to raise this to a different power. Rather, you want to raise this to a power that eliminates both. So in order to get rid of the uh, 1 half, we would have to use z squared. And in order to get rid of the 1 third, we would have to use z cubed. So if we use z to the sixth, we can get rid of both. So we're going to put 2x minus 3 equal to z to the sixth, okay? And then now, differentiating both sides of this, we simply get 2dx equals 6z to the fifth dz. And then we don't have a two here in the integrand, so let's go ahead and divide by two. So this gives us dx equals 3z to the fifth dz. Yeah, that looks okay. All right, so now we're gonna carefully make the substitution and it does get a, a little bit messier. So this here, 2x minus three is simply z to the sixth. So I'll do it over here. So this is z to the sixth to the one half, okay? And then dx is here. So this is three z to the fifth dz. And this is over. And then here, this is going to be z to the sixth to the one third plus one, okay? Continuing in this fashion, um, one half times six is three, so this is the integral of z cubed times three z to the fifth dz over, and then one third times six is z squared plus one. So this is going to be, pulling the three out, we have three times the integral, uh, z cubed times z to the fifth is z to the eighth over z squared plus one dz. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. And in the book by uh, Phillips, which I have it here, let me show you. Phillips makes uh, a very giant leap because he simply goes from here to here. So uh, there's a couple ways to do that. So that's exactly what we have here, All right? This is what we have here. And so you see here in the textbook, he makes this leap. And so I, I've done this two ways. I did this uh, with long division before making this video. I worked it out because I felt like this step was really not clearly justified. So you could do it with long division, but um, I did it another way um, that I came up with my, on my own. And I wanna show you because it's a little bit convoluted and weird. So I'm going to explain it, um, but I'm going to explain it in a very uh, terse way. And I say that because if I explain it in a more clear way, it'll take several pages. So I will say in words, and then I will write something different than what I say in words. Okay, so we're just gonna focus on the integrand here. So watch this clever trick. We're basically going to do successive divisions. So we have this quantity here, 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a z to the sixth. And then I'm going to write this as z squared, right? Because z to the sixth times z squared is z to the eighth. Then I'm going to add one so that we can create cancellation. And then I'm going to subtract one. Okay, I'm writing a little bit small. Yep, looks like you can still see me. This is a new camera setup for me, so I thought this might be fun. You can see me actually work out math problems, so I'll make mistakes and I'll talk about the book and stuff like that. So this is a one. Okay, so now it's a one. So I'm gonna multiply it back through. Minus, I'm multiplying this back through, okay? Except this is gonna be z to the six times this, but I'm gonna pull out a z squared again. Um, or rather, I'm gonna pull out a z to the fourth. This will be z to the fourth. And then this will be, because this is a z to the sixth, right? So this will be z squared plus one. And then minus one over z squared plus one. So let me explain that again, because that's a big leap. So basically this is z to the sixth times one, so that's that. This is z to the sixth times this, okay? So you have z to the sixth over this, just imagine it in your head. Okay, pretend it's there. And then you pull out a z to the fourth so that you can get that z squared term again and add one. So we're just repeatedly doing this process. So this is going to be z to the sixth, okay? Minus z to the fourth, plus, plus, it'll be z to the fourth over this. I'm gonna pull out a z squared again and then add the one and subtract it. Okay, and so this is z to the sixth minus z to the fourth plus z squared times one. And then here we have minus z squared. Okay, and then same thing here um, with, this, with this minus z squared, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna write it like this. I'm gonna write it like Okay, that's our minus z squared, you see that? And then I'm just gonna add one and then subtract it again. Boom. So this is z to the sixth minus z to the fourth plus z squared minus one plus one over z squared plus one. And the beautiful thing about having a book with us here is that we can check our work. So this is what I've come up with using my ridiculous process, which I made up. And then here we have um, the work by Robbins, which doesn't really show any work, but we have the exact same answer here in this book by H.P. Phillips. By the way, I believe this book is free. Um, I looked it up on the internet and Google said it considers it a work of historical importance. And so it's available, I believe it's available on Google Books for free. Um, it's a very old book. Okay, so now uh, we have, we simply have the three times, times all of this, right? Times the integral of all of this. So continuing in this manner, we have this here is going to be three times the integral of all of this. So it'll be z to the sixth minus z to the fourth plus z squared minus one plus one over z squared plus one dz. Really nice. And we can just integrate all of this very easily. All of these are the power rule. This is gonna give us z. This is gonna give us an arc tangent. And then we still have to go back and um, you know, make, make our substitution correctly, right? Because we still have uh, this up here, right? So we still have some work to do. So this will be, okay, this will be equal to three. Uh, I'm actually, I'm gonna leave the three outside. It's just, it's just in the way. So this will be z to the seven over seven minus z to the five over five, just using the power rule, plus z to the three over three minus z plus the arc 10 of z, okay, plus the arctan of z. And then I'll put our constant out here, plus c. So now we need to go back and um, substitute uh, everything uh, back in. So we know uh, some stuff. We know that, uh, let me write it like this. We know that z to the sixth is equal to two x minus three, okay? So that basically means um, that uh, z, okay, this means that z is going to be 2x minus three to the one sixth power. Okay, so now you can just go back in here and substitute everything in uh, quite nicely. So this will be three sevenths. Okay, yeah, cool, you can still see the math. Um, so this will be 2x minus three to the one sixth raised to the seventh power. So this will be 2x minus three to the seven sixth 
And I have, I have not done this problem until now. This is my first time actually doing the full problem. I only verified the, uh, the division prior to the making of this video, so hopefully I don't mess up here. This will be 2x minus 3 to the 5 sixths plus, and 3 over 3 is just 1, so it'll be um, 2x minus 3 to the 3 sixths, that'll be um, 1 half, minus uh, 2x minus 3 to the 1 sixth, that's the z, and then uh, plus the arctan of 2x minus 3, to, that's a 3, to the 1 sixth plus c, and that, that's, a, that's a 3 there, let me just clean that up, make it a little bit cleaner for you, hopefully. Camera's not shaking too much. Brand new setup. I'm liking this because I can just do my math and I can record it. Um, and there we go. So that is the solution. And let's check here. Um, here's the solution given by Rob uh, by Phillips. I almost said Robbins because I was reading a book by uh, Robbins yesterday. Yep, looks pretty good to me. So yeah, I think it's think it's correct. Oh, I forgot the three here. I forgot um, the three here. There's a three here. There we go. There's a three there. You see, from from this three uh, out here. So I forgot to multiply this three by this three there. So that would be uh, the correct answer to this problem. And again, this is from Phillips, Integral Calculus, 1917. Fun little book. Yeah. If I can find it online, I'll leave a link in the description. So uh, interesting technique. Um, not something that you typically would see in a calculus course. So kind of a fun, weird integral technique from over a hundred years ago. Good luck.